Hey guys, um, welcome to Notes Video L section 4.1. And the best thing that you might want to do right now is to stop this video and read these two pages. On uh, page 248, there is a proof of a thing, I think a theorem. Uh, you don't have to worry about doing the proof. Don't read the proof unless you just absolutely want to. Don't read the proof. Okay, so that really cuts down the reading, reading for you to t less than two pages. This is critical for you guys to read. I'm not kidding. I think you guys should stop, read those pages so that you understand the notation that we're going to be using to perform the skill of integration or anti-differentiation. All right, well, welcome back. Hopefully you guys did read pages 248 to 249. Um, there's a lot of notation, a lot of vocabulary given there. Um, I will spend more time on this part of the notes in a different video, but for today's instruction, we really need to focus on this content right here. All right, it says the expression integral f of x dx is read as the antiderivative of f with respect to x. Um, dx identifies x as the variable of integration. Just means we want an x in our answer. The term indefinite integral is a synonym for antiderivative. Our objective in this video is to find antiderivatives, the functions that we have known derivatives for, antiderivatives. Okay. Uh, this is called an integral symbol. This right here is um, the differential. And these two symbols together, the integral symbol and the differential right here, okay, those are both part of a process, both part of a process. So once I perform a skill, the skill, the actual calculations, these two items and symbols will disappear. And I don't mean disappear, but we're done with them. We perform the necessary calculations, so they're gone. As a real quick side example, think about the square root of 9. There's a symbol. You know what it's directing you to do. You know the answer is 3. Where does the square root symbol go? If you want to think about it disappearing, fine. But we perform the necessary calculations, so we're done with the symbol. We're going to be finding antiderivatives today. And the symbols that direct us to find antiderivatives okay, would be the integral symbol and the differential. They have to be together in order for us to understand that we're being asked to find an antiderivative. And once we do find that antiderivative, then we can be done with them and they're gone. And you'll see that through some examples. Okay, this information right here below what we were just looking at, we'll talk about that in the later video too. Okay, I strongly recommend for you guys to study the formulas on page 250. I think those are some basic integration formulas that you would want to begin to memorize. In this video, we're really going to be concentrating on finding antiderivatives of mostly power functions. There will be a few trigonometric functions that we'll be working with. And we'll just use our reasoning power to find those antiderivatives. Let's take a look at the integration formula called the reverse power rule. I know you're familiar with the words power rule because in the first semester of this course, uh, we were taking and finding derivatives of power functions, which meant we had to utilize the power rule. Well, at this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be performing some inverse operations. We're going to be, instead of finding derivatives, we're going to be given a derivative and asked to work backwards to the function. So if we're working backwards, that's why we call it the reverse power rule. All right, well, this is the formula that we're going to be working with mostly. So let's look at what it, you know, let's take a look at what, um, what happens when you're asked to integrate. That means find an antiderivative. That means find the regular function. Okay, this is asking us to find an antiderivative. All right, so we're taking a look at um, the formula that we're going to be using in most of our work today. All right, if we have an integral symbol with a differential in x, d of x, both these symbols right here, we want to focus on the integrand. The integrand is what follows the integral symbol and precedes the, d the differential, the dx. 
fit into grand. And this is our function. That's where we find the function nested in all these symbols. So x raised to some numeric exponent. What is it the derivative of? Well, we did that little introduction to 4.1, and I had you guys mentally figure out antiderivatives. But now it's time to put a formula to what your brain was doing. Once I've established that I'm going to find an antiderivative of a power function, and it's ready to integrate, okay, I'm going to actually take the base of x, and I'm going to increase the exponent n by 1. If you remember in the power rule, what we did was we decreased the exponent by 1. So now we have to increase the exponent by 1. Right, and the next thing I'm going to do is after I increase the exponent by 1, I'm actually going to divide. I'm going to divide that expression by the new exponent, n plus 1. Plus c, because remember, I can have any constant of integration here, so that when I check my work by finding the derivative, okay, the constant will go to 0. Okay? And then if I were to use the power rule, um, then I would end up with what I started with here. Okay, one note here that you guys need to be aware of is that the reverse power rule works for all power functions except for in one case. Okay, that case would be when n is equal to negative 1. So we say that the reverse power rule is fine unless n is equal to the exponent up here is equal to a value of negative 1. And if you think about that, if n is negative 1, we're dividing by 0, and we can't do that. All right, so the reverse power rule has us perform two operations. Increase the exponent by 1, add by 1, and then divide, divide by the new exponent. Okay, and those are inverse operations, reverse order to the power rule. And just real quickly, if you remember, if you were asked to find the derivative of x to the n, the two operations were multiplication, keep the base of x, and then subtraction. So I multiplied and I subtracted. So for the reverse power rule, in the reverse order, inverse operations. First I'm going to add, and then I'm going to divide. So increase the exponent by 1 is addition, divide by the new exponent. Feel free to, on your own paper, work the examples, or using the bottom of this side of the paper and the back of this worksheet, we can do several examples together. All right, what if this showed up on your homework? test, quiz, anywhere, and you were asked to find the antiderivative, that's what this means, the symbol with the differential, of 1 over x cubed. Well, it is a power function if you rewrite it. First thing you're going to have to do is rewrite it. Notice that the only rule I have right now for finding antiderivatives is the reverse power rule. Okay, it's not in this integrand, 1 over x cubed, is not in the format I need to apply this to use this reverse power rule. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on it first. Okay, the integral symbol has not disappeared. I have not performed the integration operation yet. The only thing I've done is I've brought the x to the third out of the denominator. Okay, now I'm ready to apply this formula. It's in the proper form. Okay, now that it's ready, I'm going to put equals. Okay, now I'm going to perform the anti-differentiation. Notice that I'm going to I'm going to leave off the integral symbol and I'm going to leave off the dx. They disappear together. It takes two symbols in calculus for this operation to be completed. And once I perform the operation, they're gone. Okay, and that's, that's a small detail, but it's important. When do you lo lose the integral symbol? When you perform the anti-differentiation. All right, so I'm finding an antiderivative. Keep the base of x. Increase the exponent by 1. Divide by the new exponent. Add c. Okay, we have a general solution. That's what it's called. You read about that on those pages. Okay, this is a, a general solution. Am I done? Absolutely, I'm done. I don't have an integral symbol. I don't have a differential symbol. I've performed all calculations. I have an antiderivative. I could clean this up, rewrite it if I wanted to. I could bring the x to the negative 2 to the denominator with the negative 2. Does it matter? No. Either one are correct. All right, what's the square root of x, the derivative of? Well, right now it's not in the form of this uh, formula right here. I need to rewrite, okay, 
Keep, keep your integral symbols along, x to the 1 half dx. That's just a rewrite on the integrand. Okay, it's ready to be um, integrated. I'm ready. I'm going to lose the integral symbol, the differential. These leave together. Keep x. Increase 1 half by 1. So a half plus 1 is 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves. Add the c. Clean it up. Well, dividing by 3 halves is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal 2 thirds. If you guys can see that in the process of anti-differentiation and not have to write divide by 3 halves and bring up the 2 thirds and go straight to this, wonderful. You don't have to show that step. You may be thinking, well, where's the integrand? <clears throat> well, it's understood. Here's an integral symbol. Here's dx. Okay, well, what's uh, the coefficient here? Well, it's really 1. What is 1 the derivative of? Okay, I'm ready. You know, if you want to rewrite it as 1x to the 0 dx, absolutely fine. Okay, that 1 is understood, that 0 is understood. This would all simplify to 1, and that's what's here. Okay, is it ready for anti-differentiation? Absolutely. Do you have to do this? No. I'm hoping that some of you guys can see right here that 1 is the derivative of x. That's the variable I'd be using. So 1 being the derivative of x, x would be my answer. But if you don't see it, this is a way that you can get that answer of x. Okay, rewrite, bring in the x to the 0 if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm going to increase, I'm ready to integrate x to the first power divided by 1 plus c. Well, that's just simply x plus c. All right, I'm on the back now. Let's look at another example. What if I had the integral of dz? That's a z. Just like the last example, there's an understood 1. 1 is the derivative of, I know you're thinking probably x, but remember, this directs us as to the variable we're going to use. So in this case, 1, the understood integrand, is the derivative of z. So the antiderivative would be z in this case. It's kind of important to pay attention to the variable. Um, I don't think it's a big deal if you miss that, but um, it's still something you want to kind of look out for. Okay. All right, what if you're asked to find the antiderivative of x plus 2 dx? Okay, these two symbols are necessary. I would try not to leave off the dx at all. Um, I don't think you'd get docked for that, but I would be um, looking at that for, for, from you as well. So make sure that you include the dx with the integral symbol. Try not to um, leave that off. All right, what do we have here? Well, we have a sum of two terms. And I want you to think about, are these parentheses really necessary? Just think about that for a minute. Are the parentheses really necessary? No, I don't think so. I mean, I hope that we understood that, understand that between the integral symbol and the differential, that all of these terms right here would be considered your integrand. So, I mean, you just need to be aware that the parentheses in this case aren't critical. So I would probably release the parentheses and I'm going to look at this as two problems in one. I'm going to look at that there's some properties of integrals that allow me to separate. If I'm adding or subtracting, I can separate into two um, integral symbols. So x first with an integral symbol with dx plus the integral of 2 dx, 2 dx. So it's kind of like the sum and different difference rule that we've seen in the past um, uh, for you know um, derivatives. Now we do have a sum and difference rule for integrals too. So we can separate. Now if they're multiplying, no, we can't separate it. If it's dividing, no. But addition and subtracting, we can make two problems. So oh joy, two problems in one. Let's deal with this problem first. You can work down if you want. I'm just trying to save space. All right, well, this is x to the first. I've, am I ready for integration? Absolutely. Drop the integral symbol. Drop the differential. Focus on the integrand. Increase the exponent to 2. Divide by 2. Plus, 
Now this is 2x to the 0. Some of you guys don't need to do that. You don't need to write in the x to the 0 because you know that 2, if it's a derivative, is the derivative of 2x. But otherwise, if you need to write in x to the 0 and perform the, the correct rule, fine. Okay. Now, notice what I'm going to do is just put 1 plus c. I could have put a plus c here and a plus c here, but together that still just makes one constant. Okay, there may have been parentheses here, um, not necessary. I see that between the integral symbol and the differential that all three of these ter terms need an antiderivative. And as I study each of these terms right here, I could break it apart into three integral symbols with three problems, or it's perfectly fine to integrate one at a time with one integral symbol. So what I see here is I'm thinking, well, are they all ready for the power rule? Because if they're not, I'm going to do a rewrite keeping the integral symbol and in the, in the variable of uh, integration here, the differential. Now they're all ready. They look good. So I'm going to focus my attention on this term first. Keep the 3, keep the x, increase the 4 to 5, divide by 5. I'm not going to have to come back and simplify. I'm in good shape. Minus, moving on to this term. Keep the 5, keep the x, bump the exponent up to 3, divide by 3. Move to this term. Write in the first power if you want to. Okay, keep the x, increase to 2, divide by 2. Put a plus c for all the constants that you would have there. You could always check your work by differentiating and seeing if you end up with the integrand. Remember, the integrand is what's between the integral symbol and the differential. This is the differential, the integral symbol, this is the integrand. That's what needs your attention. I have four more examples. They should go pretty quick, but looking at the time, I think I'm going to continue in the next video.